So in today's video I'm going to talk about how you can use custom constraints with your ragdolls. So first of all I'm going to create some ragdolls. I'm going to use Boca Biped 3. I'm going to use the T-Pose. I'm going to bake that out. I'm just going to use everything as is. I'm going to write clip name would be T-Pose. Accept. I'm just going to accept this. And here is my agent. And for ragdolls I also need a collision layer. Just because I'm using Mocha Piper 3, I can use a preset. Mocha Piper 3. Uh, and I also need to configure the joints. So I'm going to have uh, agent configure joints. And the same as with the collisions, I'm going to use a preset Mocha Piper 3. Perfect. So now I'm going to drop down a crowdsource. And now I have all these agents, but I want to have them in a line. So I'm going to drop down a line. And I'm going to change the direction. I'm going to change the size. I'm going to have seven points. I want to have one agent on each point. And so, but if I connect this to the crowdsource, we can see we don't get that. And that is just because the points get scattered along the line. So let's remove the line by using an add. And check delete geometry bit keep the points. Perfect. Uh, now I'm just going to adjust the size because I want them to hold hands. And then the last step is to drop down an agent constraint network that is going to create all the constraints based on this agent configure joints. We need to have two outputs. So in the first port and in the second port are the constraints. Let's simulate this real quickly. Uh, so I'm going to click this simulate and then select agent, press enter, I want the t-pose and I want the ragdolls. And I do this because now I don't have to set up everything by hand. So we can see if we go in here, we have a bullet solver, we have two states, the ragdoll and t-pose, and we have a constraint network set up here with two different constraints. Uh, and we have a cone twist constraint and we have a hard constraint, what they call a pin constraint here. So let's get back here. So what is this constraint network? Well, what do we get out here? If we look at it, it looks like it's just a bunch of points. But it's actually a bunch of polylines. And the different polylines have different attributes. Uh, one of them are the constraint name. So the Dobson knows what constraint it's going to use. And each polyline contains two anchor points. And these anchor points reference to different joints uh, in the agent. If I select one of these points and move it, you can see that it's actually a line. It's just that the anchor points are overlapping. So what I want to do, I want to pick up the already existing anchor points within the hands and then connect them together between different agents. So to do that, the only thing I need to do is to pick them up and then create a polyline and then put the name pin and then I will have a hard constraint between them. So let's do that. Uh, we need to drop down a wrangle. Uh, and I also want to connect the agent into the second port. So what do we need now? I want to loop through all the agents. So I want to have a value that is called number of agents. And that will use the endpoints. I want to see what comes in into the second port. The first port is 0 and the second port is 1 and I want to count the agent that comes in in the second port. One thing though is that we don't want to have a constraint on all left hands because this left hand won't connect to anything so I'm gonna put minus 1 actually and everything seems fine. Uh, let's do the next thing we need to do. We need to know the name of the joint that we are referring to. So we need that for the left hand and we need that for the right hand. I'm just declaring the attributes here so I don't have to do it later. You will also need the point ID for the left hand because that is what we're going to use when we create the primitive and the point ID for the right hand. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a for loop and I assume that you know how that works. And if i is less than number of agents then keep looping so now we're looping through each agent for each agent we need to tell what is the left hand and what is the right hand so let's do that first and and just to make it easier I'm just gonna copy it from the spreadsheet here 
So if we look look at this name attribute and here you can see the anchor points and what they are referring to. So mocap pipette three, agent zero, and then you have like all these agents joints, and then we have mocap pipette three, one, and all that agents joints. So this is zero, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so I'm just gonna copy it from this first agent here. So I'm gonna take the left hand, will be this, in this rig it's called left finger base to left hand index. We're gonna copy that. And then for the right hand, I'm gonna copy the right hand, right finger base to right hand index. Oh, and I also need to. Uh, but this won't work very well because this will just take the same agent and we don't want that we want to have the, the name for for each agent uh, so we want this zero here to be replaced with whatever i is in the current loop and uh, one way we can do that is to use sprint f and sprint f allows us to replace part of the string with a variable instead of the zero i'm going to have a percentage d which means whatever comes after the comma here it's going to replace the percentage d here so i'm going to put i here and for the right hand we're going to do the same thing but the difference is that we want to have the agent standing next to the first one so it will be i plus one so now we know the name of the of the hands of the current agents now we just need to retrieve what point id that is so we can create our primitive and we do that, get the left ID first. We can use the function find attribute val. Uh, first, we're going to go through the things that comes in from the first port. We're going to go through the points. Uh, and we're going to use the name attributes. That is what we're going to look up. Uh, and we're going to see if this name attribute is the same thing as the left left hand and we want to retrieve the first ID we get which just it will just be one ID in this case but we still have to specify it then we're just gonna copy this and do the same thing for the right side perfect so now we know what points we need to set and make a line between let's do that now we can use the command add prim that lets us create a primitive. We want to create a polyline and we want to use point id left and point id right and apply. And now you can see if we look here that we have a line between the the hand anchor points. Perfect. So the only thing we need to do now is to tell it what constraint it line is referring to. And we can do that by setting an attribute. We want to set the constraint name. And we want to set it on the newly created primitive, which we get by using this prim ID. Uh, and we want to set this to pin, as you remember, that was the name in the dopsim. So let's see what we get. The reason they're moving forward is because we haven't put them in the ragdoll state. So let's do that in the crowd source. We go to crowd source and then we're gonna put ragdoll as the initial state. Let's see now. You see, you can see a little bit already that they are connecting even if they are falling endlessly. So let's go make it more interesting by going to the to the dopsim and drop down a ground plane. And just move that down a little bit. Let's make one of these agents not being in this ragdoll state. I'm just going to do this quickly by putting down a group node. I'm going to call this tpos, uh, and then I'm just let's select this guy here. So now I have a group for that guy. Let's see if I drop down another wrangle, uh, I can use this group, and then I'm going to set the state. This is a variable you can set yourself. And I'm just going to set this to tpos. 
Perfect. So now if we look at this, we have this guy flying. And if you wonder why he's uh, doing this weird movement, it's just because avoidance is on in the crowd solver. So he tries to avoid the guy hanging next to him. That's basically it. So I hope that you found this useful and see you next time.